What's up, everyone? It's Paul, the MMA Shark. It is the evening of September 30th, meaning one thing, tomorrow is October 1st, and it's a slamming day for MMA. If you watch my previous video today, I did my full write-up, my full card overlook with some free plays for UFC Fight Night 61, Dern vs. Jan. Now I'm here to talk about the second card of the day, a card that in my very humble opinion is bigger than the UFC main card, and that is none other than Bellator 286, Pitbull vs. Borix. One thing about me, I'm not just an analyst on here talking about fights. I am a true MMA professional handicapper, giving fight-by-fight -fight results after I win, after I lose. Check out my Facebook page. I post after every fight I cap. Certain times I'm a little busy and it's a little later, but the fight results will be in instantly, and you can see what you're missing out on. Um, I'm a legitimate handicapper on here talking about my free plays. I'm not an analyst. I'm not on here as a fan to talk about fights. I'm on here as a fan and a handicapper to break down the fights. Most of the people watching these videos are my subscribers, and it lets them know a little bit into what they're watching, but you should really jump on. You know, if you're an MMA fan, you should like this page. You should subscribe to this page. If you're an MMA fan that, MMA fan that gambles, head over to www.themmashark.com and buy a subscription. Give it two, three months and watch how many units you're up at the end of it. You know, this is a seven-year expedition I've been on, and it's bulletproof. Losing months can happen less than 15% of the times. Never in a span of two to three months will you be down with this system. So something to consider. The free plays I've given on YouTube so far are 10 and 1. Scroll back through my videos and you'll see it. The only loss I had was in a Bellator prelim when I had Jordan Barton last week. Then we fired back with Liam McCourt at Plus Money. So every video I've done, if you put a unit on the free plays... You've won 15 to 18 units just off free plays. So imagine what you'd be getting with a subscription. www.themmashark.com. You type your phone number in. You do the charge. 25% uh, off your first month. Use the code YouTube25. It comes just a couple dollars over 80 bucks for the first month. You know, make that back in one fight, and then the rest of it is it's all gravy. So definitely consider a subscription to that. Um plus 364 units in 2022 so far. And I'm hoping to close it on 400 as soon as tomorrow. So after the UFC ends tomorrow, the Bellator main card starts tomorrow. And I'm not going to go too much into the prelims at all for the Bellator card, because quite frankly, everyone's going to be watching UFC at that time. And there's really not a whole lot of good fights on the Bellator prelims at all. You know, we're going to be going same time. The way I'm figuring it is right about the time that the UFC main card ends, the Bellator main card will be beginning. So there's not a whole ton of value on the Bellator prelims that I would take any focus off the UFC to really work on them. Um, it's a bunch of chalky, chalky fights on the prelims. You know, you have Almeida, Serrano, Anaba, Gibson, Keone Diggs, good fighter they're all minus 300 or greater. So, you know, there's really nothing to talk about with the Bellator prelims. I think that it's crazy that they're going head-to-head -head with the UFC main card during their prelims. But what I do love is the Bellator main card. I think this is actually, in my pure, pure, honest opinion, the best main card Bellator has done in this year. Maybe in a few years. You know, top to bottom, inside and out. This main card is absolutely stacked. So let's dig into the main card a little bit. I'm going to give a couple leans. I'm not going to give any official free plays out on this video. Um, but I might be able to give you some advice. Uh, the best advice I can give is subscribe and sign up. Read the reviews on my Facebook page. Read the reviews on my website, www.themmashark.com. They are real reviews. They're transparent, real results. So... You know, a bad handicapper doesn't need to lie or cover anything up. I don't need to do that because my results speak for themselves. 
So taking a peek at the Bellator main card, the first fight on it, very interesting fight. You have uh, Islam Matamev versus Nick Nyquil Brown. Nick Brown is a tough, scrappy fighter out of Pennsylvania. And let me tell you something about Nick Brown. When I was promoting regional MMA, Nick Brown fought Sydney Outlaw back before PFL was World Series of Fighting. And Nick knocked out Sydney Outlaw in 25 seconds of the first round. Sydney's team called me the next day and said, This was a fluke. I need you to make this fight. Put it on one of your fight cards. I know you got a card next week. Let's match it. Put it up. They were so mad. Sydney Outlaw was an undefeated stud at the time. He was 3 0. And Nick Brown, Nick Nyquil Brown, just put him out cold in the first round. And it is a fight that I did end up trying to match. But unfortunately, I just couldn't get it to match. Uh, so I ended up matching Sydney uh, Outlaw versus LaShawn Alcox. And Sydney dominated him. He wrestled him and submitted him. But I almost had Sydney Outlaw versus Nick Brown on one of my cards. And really, that would have been stellar. The crazy thing with Nick Brown is he was he's 32 years old. So he's not a young fighter. But he had an LFA win that he was not supposed to win. He beat uh, Arthur Estrazias on LFA. So he signed, he got a one fight deal on Bellator, and he was on the prelims versus Bobby Lee, and he was plus 600, like something stupid. And I had him in this fight to win. He won with a heel hook in the first round. So Bellator immediately tried to throw him to the Wolves. So back in February of this year, February was my best month of the year, we were plus 93 units. Bellator had him at plus 500. Now, I, I don't say Bellator. I say the odds makers. Bellator brought him in to lose. They keep bringing Nick Brown in to lose, and it hasn't worked for them yet. They matched him versus Mandel Nalo, and Nalo was a huge favorite in this fight. I think it was like 88% were on Nalo to knock out Brown, yada, yada, yada. He looked good in the first round. Uh, Brown ended up knocking out Mandel in the second round. So Nick Brown fares off really well as an underdog. Keep in mind, they were both on Bellator prelims, fights he wasn't even supposed to be in. His adversary in this fight is Islam Madamov. And if you watched Islam's last fight, and especially if you're one of my subscribers, we were on the wrong end of a split decision. They gave Benson Henderson the win. Islam beat the brakes off of Benson Henderson in this fight. It wasn't even close, yet he lost a split decision win on that fight. And, you know, when it was going to the judges, I wouldn't even think it would have been a split decision. We thought it was just completely unanimous. So that loss on Islam's record obviously looks pretty bad that he lost to Benson Henderson that really didn't look too good until last weekend. That's the best version of Benson Henderson in the Queeley fight that I've seen in years. So... Uh, Islam, dynamite fighter, you know, really should be 21 and 1, but he dropped that decision to Henderson. So he fought Zach Zane two months ago in Bellator. Uh, actually, it might have been, no, I think it was in May, so about, about five months ago. And he just crushed them, you know, first round, rear naked choke finish. Uh, Islam is very good. He's not Habib good. You know, he's also 33 years old. He's actually a year older in this fight. He's got identical reach. They both have a 72-inch reach. They're both 5'11". There's a lot of similarities on this fight. And I think it's just an excellent fight to start the main card. Uh, you have knockout power and submission power from Nick Brown, who's plus 170 in the fight. And you have really good ground attacks, good ground and pound, crafty submissions from Islam in that fight. So what I expect out of that fight is for it to be fireworks. You know, I could see the UFC main event ending and us switching over to Bellator to that fight. It's just an MMA fan's dream. And I've got my lean on that fight. It's not a play I'm ready to release yet. There's not a lean I'm going to give on it. But assessing that fight top to bottom, phenomenal, phenomenal fight. Bellator is doing a good job there. Uh, the second fight on the main card is really probably the second most exciting fight on the whole card. Uh, Juan Archuleta is fighting Enrique Barzola. Um, Juan Archuleta was a big play of mine in a fight that we lost earlier this year. 
uh, had him to beat Stotts as a plus 300 underdog. He was beating the brakes off of Stotts. Stotts is the real deal. There's no doubt about it. He ate a head kick early in the third round, and that was it. You know, there was no coming back from it. Uh, but Juan Archuleta, I mean, man, this dude is for real. He's 25-4 and four as a pro. He had the head kick loss in the third round to Rafael Stotts. Uh, prior to that, he lost a decision to Sergio Pettis, a fight that he was very much in. But before that, he knocked off Pat Mix, Patrick Mix, uh, who was 13-0 at the time. He beat him by a unanimous decision. He beat Henry Corrales. He lost to Pitbull before that, but he didn't get knocked out. He just lost the decision. But before that, he was rolling. You know, Ricky Bendejas, he came into Bellator as a complete stud, and Juan Archuleta was able to beat him. He beat Eduardo Dantes. He beat Jeremy Spoons. He beat Robbie Peralta. You know, he's been around Bellator a long time. He's a hell of a good fighter. Uh, he can get the fight done by decision. He can get it done by knockout. Not much of a submission threat. His opponent, Enrique Barzola, my Bellator play of the year, came back in June. It was June 24th. It was my Bellator play of the year. And my play of the year was Magomed Magomedov to beat Enrique Barzola and to beat Enrique Barzola by finish. And what was special about this win is Enrique Barzola, he is he was 18 and 5 at the time. And a longtime UFC vet. Barzola has the gas tank of a freak. You know, he just does not run out of gas. He's such high energy. He's so good with his footwork. And it was a five round fight. And he got submitted in the fourth round. I think we won 14, 13, 14 units on that fight. It was literally my play of the year. And I didn't take that play because I thought Barzola wasn't good. I took that play because I thought it was going to go out exactly how it did. You know, a five round fight. Uh, Magomed does not get tired. Uh, typically, Russians of his caliber can fight at that pace all night. And Barzola comes out so fast. You know, he's definitely getting a little older in his career now. He's 33 years old. But, you know, him, him versus Juan Archuleta is a pure coin flip fight. You know, you got 115 on each side. This, this is not sponsored by Pure Leaf unless they send me a check. But uh, I got to keep some caffeine in me. It's been a long day of handicapping MMA fights. So before the Mega Medoff loss, uh, Enrique Barzola made his Bellator debut with two wins in a row. He beat Nikila, Nikita Mikhailov and Darian Caldwell. The Darian Caldwell win was huge. Uh, Darian Caldwell was a big favorite in that fight. He was 14-5 and five at the time. Since, he's on a three-fight skid, so he didn't beat the best version of Darian Caldwell. Um, Nikita Mikhailov, very, very similar fighter to uh, Magomed. So this is a very, very similar matchup uh, in fighting Juan Archuleta here. I see this fight as a pure coin flip. I see it as a fast pace, a ferocious pace fight. I don't see Enrique Barzola getting finished in this fight. You know, it's as it's as close as it gets. It's going to be a hell of a fight. I think it's going to be my second biggest play of the night. Um, that's going to be a subscriber only fight. You know, too much work went into that one. Sign up www.themmashark.com. Even if you put a hundred bucks on my play in this fight, you're going to be up on the month, and the rest of it's going to be gravy. So that fight, I'm calling it right now. I'm going to have a very very big win on. Uh, third fight on the main card. Another super exciting fight. You got the return of Aaron Pico, uh, the Penn State wrestling standout that has been nothing short of incredible. Made his pro MMA debut with Bellator, and all 13 fights have been under the Bellator banner. Very, very close to a title shot a few times. Uh, he did get choked out in 24 seconds in his pro debut. He also took on an 8-2 and two in his pro debut. So Bellator fed him to the wolves a little quickly. But then he made a name for himself with four first-round finished knockouts in a row. Unfortunately, he then fell victim to Henry Corrales, getting knocked out in the first round. That was the point of his career where he just turned into a brawler and needed to settle down. And, you know, almost like um, a fighter that is just out there reckless. He found himself reckless after four first-round knockouts in a row. Uh, he thought he could just do it every fight. And he got into a firefight with Henry Corrales who isn't even really famous for knocking out fighters. So P 
Pico doesn't have the best chin in the world, but he's tough as hell. He did lose to Adam Borks after that fight, too. Since, he's just been on a roll. He won eight in a row. Um, he knocked out Daniel Carey. He knocked out Solo Hatley Jr. Solo Hatley Jr. is an awful fighter. He knocked out John DeJesus, who just had a very nice victory on Cage Warriors. He knocked out Aiden Lee. He knocked. He beat Justin Gonzalez, who was 12-0 at the time. It was a decision. And, of course, his last fight, Adil Edwards, he knocked him out in the third round. So Pico is absolute power. Uh, Jackson Wink trained fighter. He's really gotten his shit together. But he is fighting Jeremy Kennedy. And Jeremy Kennedy is a very dangerous fighter. Um, he is sitting at 17-3, and three, training out of Extreme Couture, uh, coming off a decision win against Emmanuel Sanchez. Uh, prior to that, he did lose to Adam Bork. So both of the fighters in this fight lost to the man in the main event, fighting Pitbull in Adam Borix. Uh Other than that, he had a TKO loss on PFL versus Luis Laurentino. Uh, he beat Steven Seiler by decision. He uh, Jeremy Kennedy is nowhere on the level of Aaron Pico, and that's definitely a play that I'm going to have to figure out a way to parlay because at minus 375, minus 425, it's way too juicy. Uh, Aaron Pico goes out there and gets the win tomorrow night. My job is to tell my subscribers how and when, what method, is it by decision, is it a round one finish. Um Pico's going to put Kennedy away in this fight, uh, and I think he's going to play smart. I think he's going to take his time. I think he's going to fight at his own pace, and I think he's going to put Kennedy away. Uh, closer fight than the odds because there's always that chance that Kennedy sneaks something in on him, but he's got nothing for Aaron Pico if Pico fights a smart fight. You know, if he's a composed fighter, you know, if he comes out there fighting like Cody Garbrandt, he's, he might get caught. He might have a problem, but... Safe bet would be Aaron Pico to win that fight. Maybe throw him in a parlay with someone, someone you like. Maybe you parlay him with someone in the UFC. Uh, Multi-sport parlay. You know, maybe I'm going to do that to my subscribers. Uh, and whatever I could do to make people money, I do. Co-main event, another pure banger. And on paper and based on the Vegas lines, it's not a banger. I'm going to tell you guys right now, this fight is a coin flip. Not saying who I'm officially on because even that's to be determined. It, on paper, this fight is far from a coin flip, but I'm telling you, Spike Carlisle is so much tougher than he gets credit for. Spike Carlisle is plus 325 in this fight. AJ McKee is minus 425. I'm telling you right now, this fight is a 50-50 fight. That might sound stupid, but it is. Uh, Spike Carlisle, you got to kill this guy to finish him. I have seen him escape more submissions and close to being knocked out and coming back to win. You know, if anyone saw his Bellator debut back in last December versus Dan Moret, Dan Moret had him murdered. The fight should have been stopped probably three, four times, but every time the ref said, I'm going to stop it, I'm going to stop it, Spike comes out and he's just fighting his ass off. You legitimately need to kill Spike to finish him. You know, he had two losses in the UFC, both were by decision, and one was to Billy Quarantello, and one was to Bill Algio. So, unfortunately, UFC saw nothing left after that. Uh, he did have a win in his first UFC fight, but after the Quarantello unanimous decision loss and the Algio unanimous decision loss, they cut him. Uh, he's undefeated in Bellator now. He had a win on Risen back in April. He's absolutely a dynamic fighter he's still young he's only 29 years old uh he's out of the lab um we know he's fighting aj mckee who is absolutely one of the best in bellator i do not expect aj mckee to make easy work of spike carlisle on paper it looks like he's going to i just don't think it is uh mckee trading out of team body shop mma is sitting with an 18 and 1 record that one loss in his last fight to pitbull he lost a unanimous decision as we know, he did beat Pitbull and take the title off him. He dropped Pitbull in the first round and then got him into the guillotine choke against the cage, and it was lights out. So, you know, it sounds simple that AJ McKee is just going to go out there and derail Spike Carlisle in the first round. Is it a possibility? Maybe. I'm just saying Spike Carlisle is a lot tougher than people give him credit for. Uh, I'm just curious. I have to look on topology. 91% are giving 
are saying that McKee's going to win the fight. Only 9% on Spike Carlisle. I'm not sitting here saying that Spike Carlisle is going to win the fight. I'm saying that Spike Carlisle has a much better chance than people are giving him. Of the 91% picking McKee on Tapology, 58 are by submission, 15% are by TKO, and 20% are by decision. Um, not sure exactly where I'm going to be on that fight, uh, but I'm probably going to be on the winning side because about 80% of the times I am. Uh, huge day of MMA coming tomorrow. Please be sure to like my YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, leave a comment in the video, let me know your thoughts, uh, let me know what I should go more in depth on to, uh, let me know if you've taken the free plays and made a little bit of money, I hope you did, you know, even if you didn't subscribe, you know, take some free plays, make a couple bucks, before you know it, you're going to be a believer, and you could join on to this, I'm not your typical tout, uh, transparent results are what matters to me, and, you know, making people money, being reachable during the card, you know, you can text me directly once you're signed up. So you're communicating with me. It's a total family-owned business. You know, my wife and son do our marketing. I do the capping and the recording part of this. So uh, you're supporting a family business and you're making money along the way. Main event of the evening. Five, five-minute rounds if it's needed. Patricio Pitbull versus Adam Borix. This is an exciting fight. I think this is the biggest fight of the day between either promotion, between either card. This is a fight that Borix has truly, truly earned. Uh, his path to this fight wasn't easy. You know, he's nicknamed the kid. He's still young. He's 29 years old. He has absolutely been amazing. He beat Mads Brunel by decision his last fight. He beat Jeremy Kennedy by decision. Um, Kennedy fighting Pico tomorrow night. Uh, and the fact that he didn't put Pico, that he didn't put Kennedy away, kind of makes me worry if Pico is going to be able to put Kennedy away as quickly as all think. Uh, he beat Eric Sanchez. He beat Mike Hamill in UFC. His only loss was to Darian Caldwell. He got choked out in the first round. That came back in 2020. Prior to that, uh, he finished Aaron Pico with a flying knee. He finished Pat Curran. He finished Jones and Aldo Silva. Another flying knee knockout versus Teodor Nikolov. Uh, another knockout uh, versus Anthony Taylor. And prior to that, he was fighting on the regional scene. So uh, Adam Borks has made a huge, huge impact since coming over to Bellator. Uh, he's one of the best in the world, in my opinion. 70 inch reach, 70 inch reach on him, which is relatively large for a featherweight. Uh, Pitbull is only around 65 and a half. Pitbull, as we know, is one of the toughest, best fighters, well-rounded. You know, he can finish a fight standing by submission any way possible. You know, anyone that walks through Michael Chandler the way that Pitbull walked through Michael Chandler, uh, you know he's for real. He knocked out Chandler a minute into round one when they fought. Uh, his only loss was when he got dropped from McKee who is fighting Carlisle tomorrow and then ended up getting caught in a guillotine choke, which he avenged that loss in his next fight. You know, it was only like three months later. They didn't waste any time with that. This is his first fight since winning his title back off AJ McKee. So you got to think the McKee-Carlisle fight may have some title implications. You know, Spike Carlisle, really kind of a no-name, unless you're someone like me that's really into this fight and have watched fighters evolve over the years. But... Um, I'm thinking the winner of McKee and Carlisle, if, if Pitbull wins, that's the fight to make. Um, if Borix wins, he's probably gonna have to beat Pitbull twice because that's how it works in MMA. Yeah. I mean, Pitbull, he's just a finisher. He is solid, you know, fighting out of Pitbull brothers. He is the good Pitbull brother. Uh, I know many compare his, him as the good Pitbull brother and his brother Patricky as the not good Pitbull brother. Um, Patricio is far better than Patricky, but they're both very good. Uh, other than the setback loss to McKee, Pitbull has been unstoppable. Uh, he choked out uh, Emmanuel Sanchez. He knocked out Pedro Cavallo, who just had a huge win. He knocked. He finished uh, Michael Chandler in the first round. He beat Juan Archuleta. He beat Emmanuel Sanchez. He beat Daniel Vichel. He beat Daniel Strauss. He did lose to Benson Henderson, but it was a leg injury. Um, it definitely wasn't a fight Benson Henderson was going to win. Uh, he submitted Henry Corrales after Henry Corrales knocked out Pitbull. He did drop a decision loss to Daniel Strauss. 
That was back in 2015, but he avenged that loss. Another fight here between Pitbull and Borix that is a 50-50 fight, in my opinion. Uh, Pitbull is the slightest of favorites at minus 145 right now. The comeback on the kid, Adam Borix, is at 105. So really the tightest odds we've seen in a Pitbull fight in a long time. Age will come into play in this fight, especially if it goes deeper in the rounds. If it's finished in the first or second round, it's all Pitbull. If Borix can hold the pace to get this into later rounds, it's Borix. I think I know where I'm going on it, but as a fan, be excited. As a gambler, head over to the MMAShark.com, get a subscription, save 25% off your first month using the code YouTube25. Tomorrow is one hell of a day of MMA. Don't sleep on it. Get your sleep tonight because come tomorrow, Bellator and UFC are taking over. It's going to be an incredible day. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get updates. If there's ever breaking news or anything, I will chime in. I'll make a quick video. So make sure you have me at the tip of your fingers. Um, hopefully you guys sign up. Leave some comments. Get some feedback. Let me know what you think. For now, I'm the MMA Shark. Tomorrow, October 1st, a huge day of MMA. Let's cash some tickets.